Good day everyone, and welcome to the channel. It's London Onion here with another Back for Blood Critical Comparison. And the weapons we'll be comparing and contrasting today are... The M4 and the M16 Assault Rifles. Now just some housekeeping before we dissect these weapons, it is important to state the parameters of this critical comparison. First, because of the versatility of deck builds, such as the ones that precede this video, Weapons can be morphed into variants that increase strengths or balance out needs according to one's playstyle, and will only complicate the comparison. So deck build potential will be of minimal consideration. Second, comparison will take place under two main themes, barebones and fully kitted, which will be explained as we go through the comparison. Lastly, the weapons will be compared based on their common rarity, just for consistency and simplicity. However, I am aware that performance scaling between rarities may create different results if compared at higher levels. At the end, I will state my preference, and I would encourage anybody with opposing or agreeable views to share which of the two weapons they prefer, and why. With that, let us get started. Yeah! To begin our comparison, we're first going to be analyzing the weapons from a bare bones perspective, meaning absolutely no attachments or modifiers of any kind. As usual, we always look at the stats of our weapons first to have a brief, though incomplete, idea of how these weapons may perform. Looking at these two weapons, the M4 and the M16 are matched in virtually every regard aside from accuracy, which the M16 is stated to be superior by 5 units. However, as our past comparisons would heavily suggest, these numbers can't always be taken at face value. Although firepower is stated to be the same between both weapons, their performance in inflicted damage is notably different. One of the primary differences between these weapons is their fire setting. The M16 is a 3 round burst weapon, holding 20 rounds, meanwhile the M4 is a 30 round automatic rifle. The M16 delivers 16 units of damage per round, while the M4 issues 11 units per round. This automatically puts the M16 in the advantageous position as far as damage goes. But going a little further, despite the M16 having higher damage shot for shot, the M4 towers over the M16 with an additional 10 rounds. After running some serious Einstein math, mag for mag, the M16 will issue 320 damage units, and the M4 will issue out 330 damage units. This is a small damage lead, but now begs the question of damage over time. A small note worth mentioning, as we go up the ladder of damage analysis, the findings will have increasingly more niche implications in practical use, but we will touch on the practical aspects later in our discussion. Continuing on, the reload speed is the main contributor to damage over time. After depleting their mags, the M16 can be easily noted to have a faster reload. Additionally, the M16 only has 20 rounds, meaning that it will have a head start with subsequent mags. As far as damage over time goes, any lead that the M4 will start out with will be quickly matched and overtaken by the M16. While we are speaking on damage, the penetration damage on subsequent targets are both directly and proportionally different. The M4's penetration inflicts 50% of its initial damage, meanwhile the M16's penetration inflicts approximately 40%. The direct respective damage numbers, however, are 5.5 for the M4 and 6.2 for the M16. Generally, I would say it is safe to conclude that the M16 takes the edge in firepower. Moving on to range, both are stated to be the same. But when tested out for maximum range effectiveness, the M4 tops the M16 by 3 meters sitting at 17 meters for maximum range effectiveness. A small advantage, but an advantage nonetheless in the M4's favor. Moving on to accuracy, this was the one stat shown to have a difference of 5 units. However, with the different tests that I've tried, hip fire reliability, ADS shot reliability, and base crosshair spread, only the last test demonstrated a noticeable difference. 
The M16's crosshairs are naturally tighter than the M4's, which would typically lend to greater hipfire reliability. However, both rival each other in their efficacy in this regard to the point of hair splitting differences. So I will still call this one a draw. Next, there is handling, and the best method I have for this is looking at ADS shot deviation. And after depleting three mags from each weapon, they both demonstrate a rather tight spread to the point that nitpicking them would create insignificant conclusions considering the class of weapons we're dealing with. So I will give handling a draw as well. Lastly, mobility, which was rather easy to test for, also falls under the same conclusion. Moving on to the fully kitted side of the comparison, weapons will be dressed and discussed based on their attachments of need, since the attachments are consistent and will garner the same results if the weapons are dressed congruently. The practical use of the weapon, however, is where the heart of the discussion lies. A fully kitted weapon, meaning all purple or higher attachments, will garner very different results for each weapon. Now in this Onion's opinion, adding attachments to a weapon is mainly about compensating for its shortcomings, rather than competing with another weapon of comparison. So for barrel attachments on the M4, I would say one's best option is a compensator for enhancing both handling and mobility, mainly because all other attachments would hold lower benefits due to the weapon's already established strengths in those areas. As for the M16, choosing attachments, in my opinion, is a bit more complex depending on playstyle. If you ask me, the M16 is most beneficial when used more proactively or when used for eliminating threats that are from a greater distance than usual, taking advantage of its restricted but accurate fire and damage by minimizing opportunities for close quarters combat by Ridden and mutations alike. So with this in mind, I would say either a suppressor for increased damage on unaware targets while naturally minimizing enemy awareness, or a laser sight for increased accuracy. These options will make more sense as we continue. As for magazine attachments on the M4, I would prioritize bullet stumble and extended mags in that order. With that said, if speaking on gold attachments, then I would naturally gravitate toward extended HP mag for increased mag capacity and bullet stumble. The only other second place gold mag attachment would be fast HP mag for increased reload speed and bullet stumble. For the M16, I would say options fall between extended HP mag and extended plus P mag for increased bullet damage and increased magazine capacity. Without gold attachments, I would prioritize extended magazine. But the selections here will depend on the following attachment. For the M4, just like most other assault rifles, I wouldn't go beyond the reflex and hollow sights. The M16, on the other hand, could go either way with the same two sights or with an ACOG. For a more proactively prepared weapon, I would apply the ACOG attachment which will then also influence the mag and barrel attachment choices. With the ACOG as the sight, the M16 would then also benefit from a suppressor to maximize damage on further away targets while also maintaining obscurity, since the M16 is not much of a crowd fighter. The mag attachment would be extended mags or extended plus P mag for even more damage. Otherwise, extended HP mag with laser sight and a reflex slash hollow sight would be my choice, making the weapon more suited for close and mid-range combat with increased hipfire reliability. Ultimately, this would reduce stress of ridden pressure, and also the precision for mid-range shooting with the hollow and reflex sights. Lastly, for stocks, I would give the M4 priority with weapon swap speed for both gold and non-gold stock attachments. Meanwhile, the M16 could benefit from either one, depending on setup. For the proactive attachment setup, I would say ADS speed due to the ACOG scope. Otherwise, weapon swap for the close to mid-range fighter. Now after giving both of these weapons a fair amount of playtime, they do have their stark differences, but I ultimately would not say that one is vastly better than the other. Looking back at our damage analysis, I stated that as we evaluate damage potential from shot damage to mag damage to damage over time, 
and to take it a step further, perhaps even damage over time under various contexts, the results become increasingly niche to the point of inconsequential conclusions, and therefore less generally applied conclusions. Damage over time, for example, mainly applies to bosses or extremely tough mutations at the absolute least. With this in mind, all of the other stats had relatively minor differences in performance. I think the best way to speak practically on both of these weapons while evaluating their differences fairly is to think of the M4 as a rubber band, and the M16 as a zip tie. Both are ultimately reliable in their purpose, but have their strengths distributed differently. The M4 is flexible, versatile, a perfectly average weapon that is not unreasonable under most circumstances. The weapon has a decent magazine, high ease of use, high enough effective range, can easily be used for single shots, bursts, or of course full auto. The main detriment, however, is the damage. Just like a rubber band, effective and easy to use, but flimsy. The proverbial zip tie, or M16, is a bit more limited in how it can be used, but is more effective in its stronger areas of distribution. The M16 hits significantly harder shot for shot, greater damage over time with bosses, faster reload, but also has a lower and unevenly distributed magazine with its rigid burst setting, and lower crowd control efficacy. A case can easily be made to suggest that the M4 is more built for general defense against Ridden, while the M16 is more suited for applying heavier and consistent fire to larger or more threatening targets. However, when it comes to judging weapons, I think it is extremely important to consider the weapon class and the associated role. Assault rifles are the bread and butter of weapon types and generally, they are intended for general effectiveness in as many contexts as possible. The jack of all trades and master of none, the perfect center in our ecosystem of weapons. With this in mind, we will move on to our verdict. From the bare bones perspective, considering the practical aspects of both weapons and the role of assault rifles, I would give the M4 the victory. It is extremely easy to pick up and use, Common Ridden will not easily overwhelm the weapon, and has the most well-distributed set of attributes for combat. When fully kitted, both weapons have high performance, not even including a weapon-centric deck build. However, I would say that the M16 takes the victory. The main area of contention with the M4 is its damage, which cannot be increased substantially with attachments. Instead, the M4 can only build on areas with already satisfactory performance, creating a larger gap between its strengths and the main weakness. The M16, on the other hand, can easily balance itself out with the correct attachments, and in my opinion, has more versatility with playstyle preferences and complementary attachments. When the M16 is fully kitted, its fire setting cannot be changed, but I would argue that the additional attachments make a more well-rounded weapon than a fully kitted M4. It becomes more like a choice between a zip tie and a twist tie, and this choice is still friendly to different playstyles and contexts. Now I know deck builds can make alternative possibilities, but because of how versatile decks can be, that is a conversation far too complex for a discussion like this. But I'd love to hear from you guys as to what your take is on this comparison. Do you prefer the perpetually versatile but flimsy M4? Or the strong, binary, but rigid M16? And if there are any disagreements, I welcome critical discussion. So feel free to leave your opinion on this comparison. But otherwise, that concludes the discussion. Thank you guys for joining me on this one, and in our next video, we'll be comparing the UMP-45, and the MP-5 SMGs. It's been London Onion, and I will see you guys next time.